Good morning, Bitcoin. Today is Thursday, January 16th, 2020. My name is Thomas Hunt, and here's what's happening today in Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin was down 1.41% in the last 24 hours, with a last of 8,687, a high of 8,856, and a low of 8,597. That's $1 for 11,508 Satoshis. Institutional money has arrived in Bitcoin as Grayscale sees record $600 million inflows. Whoa. Breaking this line could cause Bitcoin to turn parabolic and rally a thousand percent. I said that the other day. It's time to draw new magical lines. We had a breakthrough. But of course, what about this one? What about that one? What about that one? I guess those weren't breakthroughs. That time, the magical lines worked. Now we just need new magical lines. You are evil. Judge sells Staten Island Bitcoin scammer, a Staten Island fraudster who scammed people out of hundreds of thousands of dollars by convincing them to give him money for a bogus cryptocurrency business, was sentenced Thursday to nearly three years in prison. However, the New York Daily News didn't note where they got this image from. Could it be? Patrick McDowell, 46, appeared in a YouTube video wearing an anonymous mask on the World Crypto Network channel, giving a review of his upcoming company, Cabbage Tech. Let's check it out right here on the World Crypto Network, a comprehensive review of Cabbage Tech. As it says in the comments, wow, he just killed the coin. What a fool. Showed his true colors. It was brilliant. Well done for keeping calm. He hung himself. Wow, that got awkward. Great interview. He's possibly facing 20 years in jail right now. Hilarious. Check it out on the World Crypto Network. Shout out to Block Talk, our friends from Canada, who added this interview to the network. Novogratz questions altcoin rally after Bitcoin offspring surges. I'm not sure what changed, Novogratz said on Twitter Wednesday as Bitcoin SV, an offshoot of the original coin, gained more than 100% this week. That's right, he doesn't believe it, and it might just be a pump and a dump. And announcing the World Crypto Tour 2020. That's right, the World Crypto Network is going on tour to bring back interviews and live streams and more for you right here on YouTube. Check it out on worldcryptonetwork.com. We're going to be going to Unconfiscatable right here in Las Vegas. And perhaps, depending on donations and all those other things, uh, we would like to go to Mallorca Blockchain Days in Spain and CoinFest UK in Manchester. Check it out right here on the World Crypto Network. We're going to be having a show with all these guys on Tuesday, uh, right here at 1 o'clock Tuesday. Uh, we've already got the announcement up. People are waiting in the chat room. They're so excited to learn about the Bitcoin conferences of 2020. Who's going to be there? What are they going to say? Find out right here on the World Crypto Network. Uh, be sure to give us a like down below. It really helps new people find the show. A uh, little Twitter roundup here. I'd like to declare victory over this year's YouTube backup. Mad Bitcoins and World Crypto Net are accounted for. Uh, special thanks to Agi Link for recommending Internet Archives archiving tool Tube Up. Uh, it was pretty easy to install. I had to uh, update, upgrade my version of Python, but then it didn't replace my version of Python. I just had to use the command Python 3 to call the program. Once I figured that out, it was smooth sailing. Oh, we had a little poll down below, bonus poll. You guess the size. How big is the World Crypto Network and Mad Bitcoin's archive? 10% voted 300 gigs. 3.3% voted 500 gigs. 10% voted 700 gigs. And 76% voted one terabyte. The correct answer is 700 gigs. 10% were right. The Mad Bitcoins and World Crypto Network archive is around 700 gigabytes downloaded. Uh, we had a vote yesterday. Which conferences should the World Crypto Network attend in the WCN Tour 2020? Unconfiscatable, Mallorca Blockchain, CoinFest, or all of them? Unconfiscatable is in the lead, but it's very close with 31%. Mallorca Blockchain right behind 29%.
CoinFest UK behind at 14%, and all of them, my personal favorite, at 23%. I sure hope that we'll be able to go to all of them. And a shout out to my video from the other day, Empire Strikes Back Ships Only now has one million views. Ha, 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 ha. Check that out in the links below. Yes, I used to make videos before Bitcoin, and I still make videos after. Ben Ark writes in, he says, I demand that mad Bitcoins do this every day, the best in the business, and I'll try to keep doing it every day. Uh, today, we're doing a special test of Restream.io. If it worked, <laughs> we should be on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube all at the same time. If it didn't work, well... I'll upload it later and I just won't be as impressed with Restream. It didn't seem like it streamed yesterday. Uh, shout out to TallyCoin. Thanks to everyone for donating. We had a brand new donation of 1,285,233 Satoshis uh, from an anonymous donor with a BC1 address. Uh, thanks so much for your donations. Thanks to your support. We're 18% towards our goal of basically paying off last year's MAD tour. Uh, all those flights and Airbnbs add up eventually, and uh, it's better to pay them off than to pay those onerous credit card charges. So thanks so much for supporting the World Crypto Network with your donations. You can donate in Bitcoin or Lightning with the QR code right now, and you can create your own fundraiser at tallyco.in. All you need is a Bitcoin address, and they don't take anything. They just give you this cool-looking web page. That's about it for today in Bitcoin. I did want to go ahead and highlight and have you check out some of the shows we've got going on the World Crypto Network. We had three shows launched today, so here they are. What was John Galt's first computer? An interview with Jack Maulers from the Zap Lightning Wallet. And finally, an interview with Brian Donegan from the Isle of Man. Uh, these, these videos are all from the conferences that we went to last year. Uh, the Ugly Old Goat Working Man Bitcoin Tour. Uh, the Lightning Conference in Berlin, and of course, Bitbrum in Birmingham, England. So go ahead and check these out right here on the World Crypto Network. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, bye-bye. But we're going to go ahead and start with everyone's most favorite and familiar question. What was your first computer? Okay. Um... My first computer, I guess you can think of Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi was kind of fun. A pocket pet? Pocket pet. Yeah. Did you feed it often? I did feed it often. Did yeah. it die? It died. Yeah. <laughs> was it overfeeding or underfeeding? Um, I think uh, I think I might have lost it for a moment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you had your Tamagotchi, you had your pocket pet. Where did you go from there? Uh, my mom got a computer when I was like, gosh, I must have been like six. Wow. Yeah, she was a graphic designer, so kind of she. I would learn. I would watch her design things on like Corel Draw and stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I learned. I learned some of that, and then you know I just started using it there. And there's no internet back then. It was just totally offline. Yep. Back yep. when you could use computers for something other than Facebook and. and browsing. <laughs> it's amazing. Like you used a computer without the internet. Without the internet. <laughs> like, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah think of that. So beyond doing the uh, the artwork, what else did you do on the computer? Um, did you play any games? That was the core of it. Yeah, eventually I started playing games. I started playing um, um, Roller Coaster Tycoon on uh, on another computer. Yeah, that was a fun game. It was like, you ever play that game? You can build your own roller yeah, coasters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah your own and then you got to ride them, right? Yeah, you got to ride yeah, them. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. best part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes they'd be too scary and people wouldn't get on, so you wouldn't make any money. Wow, so, wow. You overdid it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like too intense. <laughs> yeah. You had to find that happy medium in there. Yeah, yeah. You had to like, you had to, you know. Hey, everything you thought you knew about flipping has changed. And those who don't learn to adapt are going to get left in the dust. Here's why. The mainstream media has been reporting. Cheers. Welcome back to the Lightning Conference here in Berlin. Day two. Uh, well, the two of the conference, day five of the week. We're joined by Jack Mellers. How are you? Yo, what's up? Big fan of you both. Thanks for having hey, me. Hey, hey, fantastic. Yeah. Um, how do you like the conference so far? Uh, not just the conference, the entire festival here. Uh, I love it. I'm a big fan of Berlin, uh, man. This is my first time in Berlin. I think it's an amazing place. I've been here since Monday. Uh, yeah, I'm having a great time. What's not to like? Yeah. Bunch of Bitcoiners getting together, talking about lightning stuff. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. 
the second floor has all the lightning hacky stuff. What was your favorite? Uh, buying the beer. Oh, yeah. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, come on. Yeah, and it was, I think it was 402 Satoshis for the 402 uh, payment required. Clever. The, the payment was literally required. So Yeah. yeah. I love um, just being in an environment where I look at people using Zap and uh -huh. still to this day freaks me out. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. You guys download this thing and you use it and I'm watching the loading spinner. Like, I really hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been fun just to buy beers, watch other people uh, use Lightning. has been uh, crazy. In the beginning of my talk, I said, you know, three years ago, I would have never thought something like this would have existed. So just pretty proud to be here. Really thankful that I was invited. And yeah. And and the crazy thing is, I didn't even see many people failing the payment. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it, I went through. I never yeah. had one failed round for like all the many, many hundred payments I did and yeah. so forth. Um, it, it, was, it was crazy, man. Don't pay attention to the FUD. Yeah. Yeah. It, lightning works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Does it? Like, are, are we crazy? Or is no. Well, I am crazy, yeah, <laughs> but not for thinking lightning works. I'm crazy <laughs> for other reasons. <laughs> well, uh, of course, you have, at SAP have like pioneered a bunch of awesome stuff, especially UX. It's just so smooth, right? But another thing that you're just recently released, uh, something called Olympus. Mm -hmm. What is that, Patrick? Um, yeah, so I think one of the longer outstanding problems to solve with lightning is onboarding. And I think it even extends to Bitcoin in general. Is how do you get yeah. someone from their native currency onto Bitcoin and onto Bitcoin in a way that it's useful to them, right? And so uh, it was very obvious with Zap and Lightning, you've got autopilot. You can try and eat up capital costs of opening channels for people. But generally speaking, I mean, uh, I want to go from US dollars to making a Lightning payment in like 10 seconds. And how can I do that? Exactly. Yeah, and it was a worthwhile problem to try and solve. And so... Yeah, that's basically the initiative. The background is my, my family runs a cannabis shop in, in Boulder, and we offer 10% off if you pay in Bitcoin. And that's not because we simply want to stack sats. That's also because uh, our cannabis business, we don't, uh, we're not allowed to be banked. Uh, local banks try and bank us, and then uh, they get kicked out. And we frequently have six figures worth of cash sitting in the store because we are a cash-based business and we have a high security budget of protecting the cash. We have uh, whatever doorman, security, Brinks trucks that we have to pay to transfer money. And so if you pay us in Bitcoin, it's amazing, right? Um, and so we offer this discount, but people that come, uh, they don't know what Bitcoin is. They want 10% off of their joint. And it's about how can I get you from getting from fiat to Bitcoin and scanning a QR code that we can accept. And I got about two minutes before this customer you know, turns around and walks away. And so that was the initial user story. This whole thing was designed for, it was for my parents' store. Um, and we can't accept zero comp, so we need to use Lightning. And that, that was, now obviously that user story scales infinitely throughout the world in many other ways, but um, that is at the lowest level what I was trying to solve quite literally. <laughs> and you see that, I think that just makes what, what Zap in general is just such an awesome project. It's a scratch your own edge. Like you wanted to have a good lightning wallet, right? And uh, not just for yourself, like for yourself as a person. And now with this Olympus as well. So uh, are you already using Olympus uh, at the family store? Yeah. So I, I use Olympus. Um, uh, the beta very quickly became not a beta. The, the point of the beta <laughs> was that it would be a limited number of users that were interested in helping me test it out. There's a few things like um, obviously being compliant and not going to prison is something like I want to test out. Uh, we added a feature to the Lightning Protocol called Turbo Channels to LND that we want to test out. Um, and so the idea was to get a beta of a small group of people that were had the risk appetite to help me test it. And very quickly, the group that signed up wasn't small at all. <laughs> the beta got way oversubscribed. So the way it's worked right now is you know, I'm an Olympus user, then we move it to five, then we move it to 10, 50, 100, 1,000. And, and I think probably within the next month or so, Olympus will be more publicly accessible in, in a more public beta. We, it's been working well. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of the transparent under the hood progress, progress of everything. Trying not to go to jail and trying to make sure uh, everything is working as intended. Uh, so any, any major bugs that you've discovered so far in the testing? Yeah, the turbo channel stuff is the most interesting. Um, just working on a protocol where there's other implementations, it's very different than the base chain, right? Is Lightning doesn't come to consensus is that other implementations, they have their own opinion on how to handle certain subsets of the protocol. 
Um, so in particular to turbo channels, there's this idea of a short channel ID, and I won't get too deep into it, but LND may handle it differently than Eclair and Blockstream for us to try and come up with a specification that everyone agrees on, and this person doesn't like this, or you know, we didn't handle HTLCs correctly that way. So that was, I said in the blog post, I have no intention to do this fast. I don't consider this a race. I have every intention to do it right. And so that's kind of been the approach so far. So, you know, turbo, turbo bugs, um, compliance people saying, you know, that could put me at risk of going to prison like that. I consider that a bug. So <laughs> things like that's that. A bug. Prison is a bug. Yeah. Prison is a bug. <laughs> Open an issue on Zap. Don't go to jail. <laughs> do not go to jail. Teacher request. <laughs> Bail exactly. me out. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can, can we do bailouts over lightning? How would how, that work? Say one more time. Bailouts over lightning. Uh, oh, uh, I don't know. I guess from prison, I'd have to generate an invoice somehow exactly. <laughs> by hand. Uh, <laughs> hand drawing out the QR code. Yeah. 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 Just need to make dice first. Yeah. All the dice. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Generate it right there. You said that you didn't want to accept zero concept as well, right? Mm -hmm. But turbo channels are zero concept. Not really. Um, okay, so zero comp is risky for the recipient, right? Um, and it's really, really important for parties that don't necessarily trust each other. So a cannabis co a consumer that comes in and buys $500 worth of voluptuous weed, and we hand them the weed immediately, they walk away to smoke it, and they double spend the money back to themselves. That's the risk. And we have no relationship with the user. Like they don't have a login on our cannabis store, right? They can go away forever and move to another country. And so there's, that's the risk of like a brick and mortar. Now with turbo channels, there's a, a few baked in assumptions that, that make it, in my opinion, a really great UX enhancement. First is the consumer is allowed to spend the money immediately, right? So uh, the risk is more on me as the funder of the turbo channel. Because the way Lightning works is capital is staked up front. The same dollar bill is not routed. So let me try and break this down. If I'm routing a $1 payment, I get a dollar bill, but I pass a separate dollar bill, right? Liquidity is tied within this channel. So when a turbo channel person uh, pre-confirmation is sending me funds, I'm trusting that those funds will be real, right? So I'm disincentivized to double spend on myself because they're going to start spending with me immediately. And if those funds aren't real, I've already forwarded other channel funds and I'm the one losing money. So as a sender on Turbo, if you were to be receiving on Turbo, that's a totally different trust model. But as a sender, I can send immediately. I don't care if uh, Jack double spends because who he's actually double spending on is himself because he's the one accepting my funds that aren't confirmed and then allowing me to route to other services. So I'm the one holding the bag. There's also this like, I tell people all the time, you know, it would be a great business model because people are like, your business model is going to be uh, turbo channels and double spending back to yourself. And my response is always, you know, it's a great business model. I'll walk down the streets of Chicago and I'll club everyone in the face and take money out of their purse. There's a few problems though. Very quickly, people will start running away from me. And then the other is I'll very quickly go to jail. And so it's the same thing with Olympus is like, if I start double spending on people, no one will use it. And then I'll go to prison because I'm highly regulated. But even without it, uh, in this game theory type of way, turbo channels where the recipient is simply immediately spending, the one who's actually on the other side and then is responsible for routing is disincentivized to double spend because they're the ones holding the bag of the channel capacity. I don't know if that was really long-winded. I hope that made sense. But. Oh, but, but, but it does make sense. But I think there's still a difference between um, like me as a user forwarding and routing through you or me spend, like spending it directly to you in the channel without mm -hmm. you routing. Mm -hmm. right? and, and in your case, it would be, it would be the latter. Or, right? I, as a user, or, well, you initiate the turbo channel and push the capacity to me for the amount of fiat that I gave you. Mm -hmm. And then I push directly to you you got the weed, right? So you're you're not forwarding that payment. In well, that Olympus, the the node that is uh, doing the turbo opening and is responsible to the being the relationship to the end consumer is not the one that is processing the weed payment. Oh yeah, right. Right. Olympus is just uh, infrastructure that handles the hard parts of onboarding consumers. It handles uh, managing market risk. It handles streaming quotes. It handles the Lightning infrastructure to deliver on-chain submarine swap turbo channel lightning payment 
and that's what it, all it does. And then it, it routes payments, right? What's really interesting about Olympus is traditionally with someone like Coinbase, as soon as you buy Bitcoin and the user gets the Bitcoin, the relationship with the consumer is over. They have their Bitcoin, they walk their separate way and Coinbase walks their separate way. With us, the relationship lasts forever because mm -hmm. Olympus is also the way that they route their payments and such, right? So the channel buddies know. Yeah. It actually channel is a buddies. relationship. Yeah, it's a marriage. <laughs> well, so, so, but you have many marriages then. Yeah. I'm going to be married. A lot of wives I'll have. <laughs> That's going to be a pain to manage all. It will. I think there's a lot of unsolved problems. I'll be the first to admit that I have pretty much nothing figured out which I think is a good thing. Um, that means we're solving something that's worthy and that hasn't really been accomplished. And someone has to have the balls to be first and be willing. And I have no problem being that guy. Zap has always been, Zap was announced in the midst of the scaling debate. It was me in my bedroom. It was always for the community, by the community that was going to stand uh, in, in arms with, with the people of Bitcoin. Um, and it wasn't going to have any other incentive to do anything else. And so I have no pr problem kind of being the test tell me I don't want to wait for Coinbase. Um, I'm going to give this a shot and surely we'll learn a lot of things um, for the better though, yeah. So. Uh, absolutely, right. And, and that's just, you know, that, that very community focused and iterative approach proves that you have now the, one of the best lightning wallets here in the space, right? It, it really is a project that is, because it's no longer just your project. Right? It is really, how many contributors do you have now on the GitHub? Across all of the repos, I think we're getting close to 100. Have you seen that? It's really amazing. Yeah, no, Zap, Zap is no longer mine. Zap is ours. And it was always intended to be that way. I think everyone now in the community is comfortable just opening an issue and having the expectation that through some dialogue, it will get merged and, and released fairly quickly. Um, a lot of Zap today uh, came from suggestions from everyone. I, a major principle that... I try and enforce with the maintainers of the Zap repositories is that we're always available in response and that's it. And what that means is we don't have a confident opinion on what the future will look like because we know that no one single group or one single person is smart enough to foresee it. And that as long as you know we approach software development and managing open source repositories with an open attitude of feedback and just understanding, we still don't even know why Lightning is important to folks. Is it a privacy enhancement? Why are people using it? Are they, are they buying things with it? Um, are they transferring cross-border payments? I have no idea. As we learn more, though, um, then the tools become much easier for us to build. So we're always available in response, and it's really a community-driven product. It's not a product that there's no roadmap, right? Uh, exactly. Um, yeah, so so clearly, man, you uh, you got the you got that figured out with uh, with just you know, being iterative. So, what are the future things that you want to work on uh, specifically for SAP? What is coming? Um, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, Olympus is obviously a big deal, and I think um, it will continue to be a priority of ours. Um, but outside of that, um, we'll see. I'm really curious. I think Olympus will give us great insight as to why Lightning is valuable to people. Um, so far, I think Lightning has been a hobbyist market. And what I mean by that is Zaps, all, most of Zaps users are users because they own Bitcoin, they want it to go up in price, and they see Zap and Lightning as a candidate to make them wealthier by driving their investment higher. And that's a lot of it. It's just really passionate people that also follow me on Twitter, that also follow me on GitHub, that also use my product all day because they're more fans than users, right? And I think that's great. And that's how projects start. Exactly. But with easier onboarding um, and with a lot of this UX starting to, to be solved, then we'll start to see, you know, if micropayments are really valuable for you, I can get you from your bank account just scanning a QR code, making a mic micropayment in about five seconds. So there's no excuses now. So let's, you know, why are these things valuable? Who, who really, where's the demand? What's really interesting, the first uh, user base that I've heard of that is outside of crypto Twitter for Zap is uh, in the Middle East. So our desktop app is wildly more popular than our mobile apps. And I couldn't believe it. I didn't understand. What I learned is to download something from Google Play or to download something from Apple, you have to submit a certain amount of information to those companies. Our desktop app is the best way to be truly private and from download to using. And that that's why it's wildly more popular and that a, a huge amount of traffic, dominating amount of traffic is coming from the Middle East. And there, and there was a reporter that went out there and covered this type of use case and asked them, do you know what Zap is? And they were all like, of course, we all use it. 
It's really important to us. We don't really trust our government. It's amazing that we can exchange Bitcoins now cheaply through this app desktop. And so that to me was, was huge. It was a big deal because it was the first non-crypto Twitter, like, you know, fanboy type of use case. And I think as we continue to see that, then Zap will have a more clear roadmap. But right now, do we want to adopt like the Breeze onboarding model? Do we want to, you know, adopt submarine swaps? I think it's all unclear and everyone's guessing. And I'm not really in the business of guessing. I like to build things that I think are valuable and that help people. And so, yeah, that's kind of Zap's roadmap is just trying to be attentive. It's amazing to see the global nature of this. You know, you make it in your bedroom. We make these shows at home. We put them out here and then we come here. A lot of people have heard of us. A lot of people are downloading your software. People you don't even know, countries you don't even know. It's amazing, isn't it? I don't think I'll ever get used to it, honestly. It, it will shock me forever. Even just being at a conference like this and having people recognize my voice or be fans of, of the work. And obviously, vice versa, like I'm fans of you guys. I mean, it is like a, a phenomenon that I'm not sure I'll ever come to terms with. Super lucky and happy to be a part of it. But uh, it will always blow me away, man. It really will. <laughs> All right. So we got to ask you the hard chess questions. As I told the internet, your mom told me years ago about how you're so good at chess. You're programming <laughs> computer games about chess, and you're doing speed chess. So I know you're going to kick my ass, but what's like your rating? What's your opening? Or what? Tell us about chess just a little bit. Yeah. Um, so my tournament rating, I don't even know off top. I haven't played a tournament in six years. I think I was around expert level, so 2000 or so. Nice. But Whoa. I play online all the time, almost as like, a stress like if something's stressing me out i'll just bang out a bunch of bullet games yeah online i've gone up to like 2350 wow so i'm good online um yeah classical chess opening wise traditionally uh i play e4 okay. um uh but more recently i've played a lot of king's indian knight f3 g3 bishop yeah. uh, g2 um on the black side of the board i play the french against e4 um, just to be stubborn and uh, against D4, a, a pretty much anything else. I'm really, really comfortable with the King's Indian. Yeah. It fits my, my uh, style as a human being. Very aggressive, binary, go big or go home. Yeah. And yeah, so if you really want to get to know me well as a human, you should play me in chess. You'll get to know me after a few games. Awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, I have the same kind of thing with Tetris. If I have some chance, I'll play a little Tetris and it just it's relaxing and it's calming and it's not even really a game anymore. It's like I've played it too much at my desk at work right? and I'll just like, and like I have different like styles of playing. If I want to play like flat or if I want to play, you know, things on this side or that side, or if I want to smash blocks or whatever I'm feeling like doing is like, I can really play the game well. So I could see that in speed chess. I need to practice way more. Yeah. What are your openings? You got to go now. <laughs> no, it's bad. I mean, I, I, it's all like, I'm trying, still trying to read the person psychologically, and it's impossible through the computer. So, I mean, I'll start out in the center, like E4 and E5, like get my pawns out there if they'll let me. Uh, if that happens, I'll try to develop a castle pretty early. And then sometimes, like on defense or whatever, I'll do Sicilian sometimes and play on the right side, mm -hmm. and I can manage to get the right side to come up to smash the center, then bring the center in. And that seems to work pretty good. Like I was playing a, a guy at work once, and we were well even when I was playing in the center. And I was like, okay, I'm tired of playing him in the center. And it took three or four games to get to that tiredness. I was like, okay, I'm going to play him on the right side. And then I just smashed him. And it was like a different game. So yeah. it's really interesting, the different levels to it. But I also feel like the more I've studied it, the worse I've gotten. Like <laughs> I read all the, I try to read the opening book. I try to read the mid game book. I need to read the end game book more. I think I, I did it wrong. I need more end game. And then in general, I think I was much more better, like instinctive player when I didn't know anything. And I was just like, killing pieces or interested by what they're doing and I don't know, I've read like the Bobby Fisher teaches chess book and he talks about looking at a position and being able to know if it's a good or bad position mm -hmm. instantly and I just loved all these examples like it's old paperback book you guys can get at the store for like 10 bucks or whatever it's a great little book and it's very reasonable to read uh, but I really liked his book I don't know if the Microsoft chess books helped me at all uh, they're so like you know, dummies books, like they have all the things. And oh, it's just, I, I don't it's so like, detailed, man. So. Yeah. Aaron Nimzovich is my favorite chess uh, author. I yeah, recommend yeah. his books. Yeah. Let's check it out. Yeah. yeah I hope I got to help you out, man. I, it's not <laughs> supposed to work to where you are trying to learn more and getting worse. That's yeah, not supposed yeah. to be how <laughs> things work. So we'll have to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm on uh, chess.com now, mad bitcoins. 
You yeah. should uh, sign up at bchess.org. I'll try it again. It's an open source chess server. I tried That's it once. So it dope. It wouldn't let me. I couldn't find the button to challenge people in the interface. Yeah, and we'll figure like, it out. I was like, come on, open source. Create an issue. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. I'll redesign the interface. But thanks so much for the interview, man. Of really course. Cool. Thank you guys for having me. Big fan yeah. for, I mean, years now. I grew up on WCN. Get home from school, watch Thomas. So uh-huh. <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, that's Dude. crazy. So much. Yeah. Cheers. Give it up, Jack. And see you around. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Peace out. Hey, everybody. We're live again. Uh, I'm already back downstairs introducing the next guest here. I'm emceeing the conference, tweeting about it. I need to find a good GIF. Uh, let's go with this one. And um, all right, maybe the smiley guy. And that's uh, not great. Um, I'm going to tweet that. Dan's going to be right back with you. You had a power issue earlier. Uh, we figured it out. We plugged the laptop back in. Uh, so we're back on again. Uh, let's see. Do we get that tweet? No, there's no tweet there. All right, that's um, interesting. Where did the tweet go? Uh, but we're looking at this account and that account. Let's see. And oh, it's on that account. And we're going to put it on this account. And there's no one in the chat, so that's good. It's probably not working. Um, let's see. All right, retweet this. And then click on this link. Mm-hmm. Seven people watching now. Cool. Hello to the seven people watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and a share down below. Try to open this up in the YouTube app. And here's Dan. Come this way. There's less cables. Less cables. Hi there. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Uh, that was my fault because I, I didn't. I think I saw the battery going down, and, uh, and then you know, I, I failed at, at putting it on. I did try and plug it in as it seems so. But anyway, Tom sorted it out. So I'm here. We're at Bitbrum, and I'm joined by Brian from Blockchain Isle of Man. Blind Donegan yeah. from Blockchain Isle of Man. Or, well, Digital Isle of Man. That's it. There's two, there's two companies. So, um, yeah, Digital Isle of Man is the umbrella identity. Yeah. Um, can you hear me okay? So, uh, Digital Isle of Man is the umbrella identity. It's a um, private sector government uh, body. Yeah. Um, but within that, we have uh, our new entity, which is uh, Blockchain Isle of Man, yeah. uh, which is basically a high speed um, innovator, uh, but also. Uh, an opportunity for uh, scale-ups and startups to actually benefit from our support uh, on the Isle of Man around VC and regulatory yes. initiatives that we've uh, just undertaken about six months ago. Oh, cool. So it's, it's like a uh, like an, inc- an incubator for uh, blockchain-type startups? Blockchain, scale-ups, and startups, but it's a high-speed version. Interesting. So like, re- so quick to market then? Absolutely. So everybody's in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, so we completely recognize that. Yeah. Uh, so rather than just have people sort of wandering about trying to just get the, you know, their money together to get the regulation together, all of that stuff in terms of how they're going to develop their tech, yeah. uh, we, we, we basically assembled all our assets in, uh, in, in one uh, go-to place uh, where our applicants can uh, get access to all those goodies. And which, what, what, is there a web, website? So, um, so we've got digitalisleofman.im. And is that that's can people get to the blockchain yeah, accelerator from absolutely, there? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you can also reach me on uh, link. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, but also uh, Brian Donegan at gov. Im is my uh, my email. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people uh, reach me through the community that want to uh, apply to the program. Mm. Uh, it's a very very simple process. So we uh, have a uh, two page online application form that you can just fill in, send it back to me. Uh, with as much information from their business plan as they would want to share, yeah. uh, plus any published material, any technical papers that they've published in the last 12 months. Yeah. Uh, we sit as a panel every month, uh, and we assess all of the applicants, and the successful applicants get a welcome letter from our CEO, yeah. uh, and that really kicks off the process, and uh, we we bring them in. So what what's the, uh, if you're able to say, what's like the average time from um, application to receiving the, the first funding? That's a really good question. So um, so the actual funding process uh, within our program is actually handled by a different team uh, within our organization. So it's, it, it, it's a different process. So just because you get a, a successful application into Blockchain Isle Man doesn't automatically entitle you to the funding. Yeah. Uh, you've, got to, you've basically got to 
sit down with our funding specialists and actually go through that. Yeah. Uh, so really, from, from our perspective, the real advantage of Blockchain Isle of Man is to be able to develop your tech. Yeah. So we're all about trying to identify really good, strong management teams with good technology projects in, in the blockchain space mm -hmm. uh, where we can actually help them achieve all of their key deliverables. Uh, and so we want to do that quickly. Uh, and we recognize that there are key components in that mix, yeah. mainly regulation, mainly finance, yeah. uh, that have to be addressed. And yeah. so we help them do that. And um, in terms of the, um, oh, I was going to say, oh, is it modular? Can we? Can, is it not? Uh, can you be modular so someone might not get the funding, but they'll get the assistance from regulatory, from you know, tech, tech incubator style? That's yeah, absolutely right. Oh, absolutely right. Yeah. So in terms of what's in it for us. Uh, and what's in it for the applicant. Uh, obviously, it's pretty obvious what, what's in it for the applicant. The applicant actually gets access to all the goodies uh, early on if the, if the management team is strong enough and if the idea is good enough. Uh, and we see that there's an opportunity to actually develop that technology uh, you know, over time. Um, from our perspective, um, the real benefit is that we get good quality uh, jobs created in the island and that trickles down into the broader economy. So yes. all these people buy cars and pizzas and houses and stuff. Mm. And so pay the taxes. A, and pay the taxes and blah, 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 blah. So there's a, there's a real economic benefit as a result of that. And so I just slight observation. So you said, because your email address is at gov.ia. Yeah, so yeah. Are you, so are, you, are you affiliated with the government? Yeah, so it is, a, it is a proper government private sector initiative. Oh, fantastic. So, so Isle, Isle of Man, we're 85,000 people, so it's a relatively small community. Yeah. Uh, and so public and private sector is a key sort of part of our success. We're, oh, my, my, my head. Yeah. We're, we're, as well. <laughs> box briefly. so very, 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 very agile. So we can identify opportunities and really go after that quickly. Switch yeah. up, up to on. And fantastic. So, so yeah, I, I, that's really cool that it's actually, you know, the, the government is behind a blockchain initiative. Absolutely. Since you don't have that in the UK. Instead, you have people being scared away by so, being rejected from banks. So, 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 so what we have is we have people actually telling us that the reason that they want to come to the Isle of Man is because of our okay. ecosystem. Yeah. And oh, so okay. because we're agile, because we, yeah. we, we don't do slow no, we can actually respond quickly to people who uh, want to come and see us. Not everybody is successful. Yeah. Uh, there, is a, there, is a, there is a criteria. And the criteria really is you know, strong management teams with a track record. Uh, with some really good tech that we believe that we can actually see headroom where we can help them develop yeah. uh, that tech and hit their commercial objectives quickly. But all of this comes because the Isle of Man got into e-gaming or gambling online uh, back in the early 2000s, had a great success with that. Uh, and in 2013, a lot of those uh, e-gaming companies were handling crypto. Mm -hmm. They came to us and said, you know, clearly a lot of the users love the, uh, the flexibility um, you know, no chargebacks, et cetera. So what can government do for us? So we sort of take a look at the whole AML, anti-money laundering and uh, know your customer rails, introduced those in 2015. Uh, and I think we were the, one of the first sort of jurisdictions that people realized was actually uh, friendly towards blockchain. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we started to get traction uh, in, in an appropriate way. So that was really good. Um, obviously, we had a crypto winter in 2015 that extended into 16. But then had the, uh, the, the tsunami of uh, ICOs that came our way in 17. Um, Bitcoin did 20x and, uh, and then you know, we saw what happened last year. Um, and so that really brought us to a point where we thought, you know, we've got to do something about this. This is an opportunity. The phones are quiet at the moment because yeah. you know, the market has, has declined. Uh, so let's just put together and assemble and reconfigure and reconstitute ourselves in a way that is actually friendly towards the community and friendly towards the ecosystem. And for us, that's about the startups and it's about the scale-ups. And, you know, we really want to engage with the, you know, with the quality end of that business. And, and make the use of the technology, which is growing so rapidly. And, and on to that. So, so um, we're also joined by, is it Tim, sorry? Yeah, Tim, Tim Burton, yeah. Tim, my, uh, Jim. Oh, who's also? Jim. Jim. Oh, Jim, so, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. So I'm the technical lead in the team. Yeah. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. And so, so what, what, what drew you to working in, in blockchain? Um, uh, you know, what was the kind of deciding factor you made you think, oh, when did you have your epiphany moment, you know? Oh, so, Bitcoin is best. Um, so I've worked with a colleague, Gary Rowe, for years. We um, co-wrote the Multibit Wallet, one of the early uh, oh, yeah, Bitcoin wallets. Yeah, so there's Multibit and Multibit HD. Yeah. That was like from 
2011 to 2016. Yeah. Wow. So that was our baby for a long time, you know. Yeah. So that's all like hardware, Trezor, hardware, wallet support. So that was the, I mean, in those days, it was like the Bitcoin dream of you know, change the world. Yeah. Totally decentralized money, you know, so it's great. Thanks, Satoshi. Yeah. Uh, so after that, we sold that. We sold that to KeepKey, that wallet. That's a hardware wallet manufacturer. Oh. And then cool. on the result of that mm. experience, we got a year's gig at HSBC in the applied innovation. So that's a blockchain future technology team at HSBC. That was interesting. And it's a real eye-opener seeing how the banking system works <laughs> and how, how different it is. The risk profiles are totally different to in blockchain. They're, they're like completely chalk and cheese. Mm. Uh, so then after that, I worked in a startup, which went bang, like a lot of startups, you know. And then, Loving. so for, for most of this year, from January 2019, I've been uh, at the blockchain office in the Alamance. So we've set it up. We do a variety of things. And... The main one we do is, I think of it, we're selling the island uh, for blockchain companies mm. to come over. It's not suitable for every company, to be honest. You know, um, you you need to want to be on the island. No one is interested in having like brass brass plate companies anymore. Yeah, you actually have to have some economic activity substance. There. Yeah, yeah, substance is a technical. Bring term, yeah. you want to bring people to the island. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so it's really important. So. Um, for the younger generation, it's difficult. I mean, I've got nieces and nephews. It's very difficult to get a good quality job. So that's really what we're interested in. If someone asked us before, like, do we have like revenue targets and stuff like that? Said, well, no, the target, the metric that we're looking at is jobs on Ireland. Yeah. Because yeah. even, so Isle of Man has 84,000 people. So even 100 jobs, 200 jobs, it makes a significant dis- difference. That's cool. I think that's a great, great approach. That's a really good metric, actually, isn't it? Like, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, it's all about people at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. So in, you know, in, that, in, in that period since uh, you know, 2013, uh, clearly the whole sort of ecosystem uh, and the community around Bitcoin and blockchain has changed radically. Um, and you know, we see a lot of uh, narrative now that's saying, well, you know, Bitcoin celebrated its 10th anniversary and... Uh, you know, not a great deal has actually changed when we look at this compared to the dot-com boom. So after 10 years of dot-com, we saw a lot more sort of significant traction. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we, we sort of deny that because the, as a hypothesis, it doesn't really work simply because in the Isle of Man, uh, we actually see that, um, you know, that engagement and that convergence going on between uh, blockchain and e-gaming is very real. Uh, so we've licensed uh, quite a few uh, blockchain-enabled businesses, uh, mainly in the uh, lottery space. Uh, we were the world's first jurisdiction to license a blockchain-enabled lottery. So to people who say, you know, where, where is the beef? Where is the evidence of blockchain in terms of development and use cases? If you're not seeing it anywhere in the world, you haven't been to the Isle of Man, yeah. because we can show you. And just out of curiosity, what is the blockchain lottery? What's the company called? Uh, Quanta. Oh, okay. It's not the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and, and have have you seen like um, have many of your customers had the experience of being rejected in other countries first and saying that we we couldn't have we didn't they didn't give us a bank account we couldn't do this we couldn't do that and, you know have you had an experience of that many? So most of the people that we engage with. Oh, it is Jim Burton. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, Jeremy. That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Multi bit. <laughs> Tim Burton is the um, director, film director, who makes oh, excellent Tim movies. Oh, keep on saying Tim, sorry. Edward, That's right, you know. Edward oh. Scissorhands. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, sorry. I mean, the great movie. Yeah. <laughs> Good great Tim. Yeah. Oh, no, he definitely is, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, Jim, Tim Burton from Ultimate. It is definitely Tim <laughs> Not Burton. Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to your point, um, mm. yeah, so, so the, the regulatory piece is the, is, is the real attraction. So a lot of mm. the businesses actually don't run away from regulation, they actually run towards it. Yeah. Um, simply yeah. because they realize that, you know, as an enterprise... Do or die. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really? And Not, it's a competitive but, advantage. To I mean, no one in Bitcoin wants to admit it. You've got to, because you're going to get shut down. You're going to get deplatformed. You know, uh, uh, the, the best thing you can do is, I don't mean this term in it in a violent way, but infiltrate and destroy. <laughs> get in there, get cozy with the regulators. Oh, in a bad way, because you want to go, no, no, yeah. I don't mean like that. Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know what I mean is, at least if you work with regulators, You've got a chance to sway them, to convince them, you know, rather than them regulating the crazy side of it. You know, yeah. to see no, that's, the exactly, business that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And what we actually see here from the startups <laughs> and the scale-ups is basically they're saying, yeah. 
we see the value of of having you know the the rubber stamping if you like that process yeah. of being uh, you know scrutinized and approved as a key part of in, uh, adding value to our enterprise because you know in two three four years time we're going to be doing a private sale we're going to be ipoing you know we're going to be we're going to be having some sort of a sale event with our enterprise and by being in the isle of man actually adds value because we're in a quality jurisdiction that's yeah. widely respected and understood that's that's where we get that's where we get some real traction yeah. so it's interesting so sometimes we get approached by people who they're working purely in the crypto space uh, but they know that if they're in the fiat space, it will be tightly regulated. Uh, maybe it's you know an exchange or um, trading futures, something like that. And so currently, that legislation it doesn't really exist anywhere, really. Um, so I can't mention the jurisdiction that the company was already in, but they said they had already gone to the regulators. And the regulators said, well, we don't have any regulation. And they put it down as um, one of their uh, risk factors um, in their prospectus. Because, well, what do you do in that situation? And you make making the best effort to comply yeah. with laws that haven't been written yet. Yeah. So, so that, those companies, they know that they have to start a dialogue. And it's a multi-year dialogue. Um, those regs don't uh, come around overnight. Message. Oh. Is that... So, uh, go on. Uh, oh, oh, you want to, I'll, I'll do it subtly. I think I was, someone's trying to contact me. Yeah, don't, uh, don't worry. You still um, carry on there. So, I'm so, um, sorry, no, what you were saying. So, so uh, about being a seal of approval, I think it has legitimacy when they are looking for funding. Uh, so, yeah, and it decreases their personal risk as well. Yeah. Um, so, the, there's some great work you mentioned before about Westminster, about the UK. Um, we've been tracking. There's, there's a pretty effective team. Um, it's the uh, UK, what is it? UK Crypto asset task force yep. so that's bank of england uh, treasury and fca and they've had a couple of documents out this year one a policy document on tokens yeah and it's pretty good um they've got to the point where they've got a token taxonomy they're saying like tokenomics is going to completely change how people how companies raise money yep. it's going to be taught in mba you know your average mba is going to be taught it in five years because it's so flexible mm. and a lot of Jurisdictions are struggling with it because of the trying to understand what it means. Um, it, you know, is it a share? Is it a bond? You know, it converts. You know, it's a future that converts at this point. You can have things that are infinitely complex. And so sometimes we see stuff and we say, well, look, you're making it a bit too complicated. Like you, um, you're being a little bit too clever. That's mm -hmm. a fact. If you, where are you going to make your money? Going to make it here. Then concentrate on that area and simplify things. Yeah. So that it's it's like anything, isn't it? If you have a simple, clear, straightforward business proposition that you can understand, like with an elevator pitch, people will go, "Yeah, okay, I get that. Yeah. I'll put money into that. I understand that." If you have something that's infinitely complicated, mm. then you can't tell the difference between that and something that's snake oil. Yeah. So we will often say to people, "Look, you know, this area is great, mm. but this area you kind of." What what do we use? We go room for improvement. Yeah. Weak areas. I mean, we, we're not being critical. I mean, we see these allowable weaknesses. Yeah, really I mean, like we see like dozens of these yeah. um, over time. So if there's an area where people they're a bit weak on, we'll, we'll tell them that, and often mm. they'll go away, find a. Typically, they'll find a specialist in that area. Next time we see it, their their business proposition is a lot stronger, mm. uh, and like, good for them. I think what, what's interesting about the you're saying about this, the, that seal of approval is that you know part of the Bitcoin community and crypto community is all about the, the anarchistic view of like you know, no government and yeah. But interestingly, I think and because I've got a slightly warped opinion because uh, I got a job at um, Old Mutual after the literally seconds after the financial crisis. Yeah. Um, good time to buy the share scheme, but um, I, and I was I literally was in there building a financial control system. Yeah. So you know all the controls, processes, etc., and anything that um, uh, any task that's linked to or control the process linked to a financial line item that could lead to a misstatement, etc. So You're a financial I'm, wonka, huh? Oh, don't you? Oh. <laughs> no, I, I I saw the value in it yeah. because I was also with Northern Rock as well. So when the bank roll happened, you know, blah blah yeah. blah, you know, all that stuff. All that. So um. I actually, uh, the regulation, interesting now, is it's almost become full circle because of the amount of scams there are. Government, government regulators kind yeah. of approving 
is actually a really big thing because it's like, it, it, you know, it's, it's a seal that this isn't a scam because, you know, well, like, whatever, people, some people think the government's a scam. But at the end of the day, it is this kind of now certificate of saying, like, you know, like, oh, fair trade. You know, this has been assessed. It's not a scam. It's actually legitimate. Yeah. And I think that's actually yeah, beneficial. I, I also think that, you know, since 2013, that was the sort of the, the, the sort of year of entry for us. Uh, the, you know, banks, not only banks, but I think the wider sort of financial services community have actually had time to consider the technology. They understand the technology now. A lot of them have, you know, labs dedicated to it behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a greater understanding of the network effects of Bitcoin and, and, and the wider sort of blockchain opportunity. Uh, that wasn't around in 2013 because back in, back in the day, um, it was very, very negative. It was about Silk Road. It was about Mt. Cox. It was about all that stuff. Um, but now, I think people are actually awake to the opportunities around the technology in terms of, of the applications, the wider applications. And it has got safer, I think, overall. You've got like multiple hardware wallets. Like, there's an exhibitor here that's got multiple different species of hardware wallets. Yeah. You've got the... People like Coinbase, they, they've spent a lot of time and effort on making their proposition... Uh, usable to the masses. I, mean, I know some yeah. people don't like Coinbase because it's centralized, but you can always get your assets off, put it into a hardware wallet. You know, you've Coinbase got, got the. I'm not. You know, Coinbase was easy for me to onboard yeah. people in Bitcoin. You know, yeah. I can't. Plus, they get. I'm going to be wrapping at their Christmas parties. And, yeah. and so, it, <laughs> I mean, we all know the technology is complicated, and especially um, as people start moving into bespoke economics. You know, we mm. we call it. Um, you can build anything now. And it, it's great. Um, it's going to be very useful with renewables. You know, if you put assets into uh, building a renewable, you get an income stream for 50 years into the future. That's you know, the net asset, the net the present value of that is worth money. Mm. People are going to do all sorts of things that um, we're never going to dream of. And you've, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to put down like the guidelines for the simple structures. I mean, people are doing very simple things in reality now compared to we'll, we'll be laughing in 20 years time at the sort of things we do but you've got to start somewhere mm -hmm. and you've got to build and you've got to build on it organically mm -hmm. uh, otherwise you just simply are never going to get anywhere it's like that 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 great video the interview of david bowie in like the early 90s and he's saying someone says i think that the interview says what what, what do you think of the internet and he's yeah. like it's a, an alien <laughs> like, you know, he had the foresight to think that this, this thing that we can just see now is there's so many branches to yeah. it. And Bitcoin's like that. And we're seeing a lot more projects now that, uh, like when I was working on the sidechain project, where people are using Bitcoin as a protocol. So they're creating tokens on it, yeah. kind of like liquid, yeah, kind yeah, of your yeah. sidechain. So you're using it as a, a time stamping. All these different things that you can use Bitcoin for yeah. now um, and using it as a protocol. And there's just, like I said, there's going to be 20 years time you're going to be like, oh, remember when we thought Bitcoin was just yeah. a store of value? Yeah. Oh, you know, and I think that's, a, so can you, are you able to, with, uh, without you know, going for any yeah. NDA stuff, but what, what sort of interesting projects are you working on at the moment that you've got under the, under your wing? Oh, so the, the, um, we have a, a monthly social on the island. So, um, so we have all the companies, uh, they're all company confidential, so we can't talk about those, but um, we have presented stuff about the, market sectors. Mm. So we can talk about that, I think, happily. You know? So the big ones are gaming, because the Iron yeah. Man has a connection with that, and payment processing, yeah. moving money around, basically. Yeah. Um, so those are the big two. And then the, there's a very long tail, and it's all sorts. Um, it, it's all over the place. It's, um, we mentioned uh, green bonds before. Um, Pharmacy, big pharma. You've got pharma, you've got, what can I think? Uh, Box, mining boxes. Yeah, it's very diverse. It's very, cool. very diverse. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Like yeah financial services. All, all it's worrying when you've got, a, a, you know, too much in a certain area, I think, because then, you know, it, it can, you know, yeah. if you're yeah, too, too, too weighted in yeah. and too concentrated. Yeah. So that's really good that there's just yeah, yeah. different services. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's by market sector. And then uh, we're, we're specifically technology neutral. So the sorts of things, uh, we see lots of ELC20s. Um, people are just accepting Bitcoin. Um, that's actually very straightforward to do. People kind of don't realize that you can make, take payments and make payments in Bitcoin and that's mm. perfectly okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, people, th th people actually 
think that, and the, the myths that travel around really cheese me off. Like that people that genuinely think that like it's illegal to use people. No, not at all. Like no, no. I'm saying some. I speak. I speak to people that, 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 that do think that. There's some people that think that still think that it's like completely anonymous. It's like no, it's like the most publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it's it's annoying that these sound bites get out and yeah. suddenly yeah, and you know it takes a long time to change those yeah. minds. The, the biggest the biggest thing that's happened to Bitcoin community is the emergence of Libra, mm. because because of the amazing amount of publicity that mm. it's actually had in the in the last six to twelve months. Uh, what people are now talking about is what is money, uh, and yes. so and yeah, and so and and so that debate is kicking off. Yeah. Uh, and so you know it doesn't take very long before you suddenly realize you know what the what the strengths and weaknesses of fiat are versus crypto, mm. and it doesn't take you very long when you talk crypto to get to Bitcoin, mm. and you talk about the fact that Bitcoin is hard money, uh, and so you know I think I think that that's been great because. I think suddenly people realize that the underlying technology is now out of the bottle, the genie is out of the bottle, and it can't be uninvented. Yeah, that's can't great. Be shut down. It's, like a, it's a multi headed ninja snake, and you, you can't cut the head off a snake. Can you cut the head off a snake? You can cut the head off a snake. Something like a hydra. You can't cut, yeah, something yeah, like that. Something like a hydra, yeah, that you just like, you keep on talking about whack a mole. Because as long as like the last computer going is still running a node, like, and, and yeah, I think that's just incredible. It's something that it's like an, it's like an electromagnetic organism. Yeah. It can't be shut down. So I, I was um, chatting to a friend um, just this week, trying to, and I think a good comparison to cryptocurrencies generally is the internal combustion engine. When you first, when the ice was first invented, no one realised what it was going to be used for. Now it's you know powering lawnmowers and planes and trains and automobiles and everything. Uh, but the whole idea that you can transfer value trustlessly anywhere on the planet, and you can engineer it. You can engineer a solution to be exactly what you want, mm. uh, you know, with incentivizations for, oh, okay, we need people to provide these services. Oh, let's invent by mining, yeah. Or, yeah. or all the other reward systems that are coming. People don't really understand that that's a step change. It's an incredibly useful tool for us to build new systems of organization mm. that are inherently global. I mean, we're the Isle of Man, so that's inherently a geographical region. Uh, and and regulators tend to think in terms of regions, but the technology is inherently global and yeah. it's inherently real time or near real time. That's great. You know, what can you build with that? Or yeah. anything, natural yeah. fact. Yeah, and I think in the with the with the the advancement of like lightning um, side chains, we're yeah. seeing a lot more kind of focus on Bitcoin again now because although there is your ERC twenty. You, you can now produce tokens on Bitcoin. Yeah. You, you're leveraging a different, you know, so people have the choice about what, uh, what's, the, what the word, what's the word? You know, the, the risk factors, that the risk, yeah. pref, the risk appetite. Yeah. So some people are less worried about the security, so they're happy to have it on the LC20. So some people want this the, the immutability, so they have it on Bitcoin. Yeah. And yeah, I think, I think it's good that people have the, the choice ultimately. Well, you've got a whole variety. I know this is a Bitcoin specific podcast, isn't it? But you've got now a whole variety of, tech stacks, um, all of which have good points and bad points. And a good engineer will use the right tools that are task in hand. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we should all do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and even just, even if it's like, there is still a world leader of tools, like I said earlier, name one industry, name one company where it's the only company that does something like this. There's competition yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Like there's, it, it, even though like Apple have got the best phones, for example, yeah. There's some 50 other phone companies. So I do think it, the idea of the utopian dream of just Bitcoin, um, it, you know, it's a bit far-fetched, lovely and everything. If, you like, if, if we like switch over to Bitcoin now, it all be it gone, blah, 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 and it was painless or whatever. Or but it's not going to happen. There will be free market, et cetera. And technology at the end of the day is going to win. If people can use the tool easier yeah. than something else, um, even if it's because Bitcoin isn't reached the level of, uh, customization that they can get with another coin. They'll use the other coin first. And that's just kind of, they're not going to go, hang on a sec. I really love Bitcoin. So I'm not going to code anything until two years time when it's, oh, God, I think we got BCC. So if we can, we can wrap up, because we've got BCC pay service. So coming on soon. So, so uh, Brian Donegan and Jim Burns. That's right. Yeah. Um, and so any, any, any key messages? So, you're, just to reiterate, you're from Blockchain Isle of Man and uh, parent company Digital Isle of Man. 
um, what would you what, what, what uh, are you looking for? So we're we're looking call for community. yeah. So the call out uh, I call out to the the, the community uh, is that we're looking for strong management teams with a good track record, yeah. with some great innovation and some great ideas, and they want to get access to a jurisdiction that can understand their technology, number one, but number two, has the assets available to help them, mm -hmm. support them, uh, and get them to achieve their key commercial objectives in the shortest possible time. Fantastic. And for me, it's Brilliant. just keep coding these fantastic projects. Yeah, I like that. And keep open source. And I've oh, open yeah. source once as well. <laughs> and just one final thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that is, I'm a, I'm a fan, so, you know, Bitcoin is hard money. Bitcoin is definitely hard. It's the hardest money. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Bye now. Awesome. Enjoy the uh, yeah, rest yeah. of the conference. Well,